What's going on guys, we're back here today to do a follow-up to my 365 macro video. This one though, we're gonna talk about everything else, 365 macro versus everything. All right guys, this isn't gonna be so much of a shooting video because it's gonna be long enough, but I wanted to showcase the 365 macro versus a lot of other popular guns in and around the same category. But first I wanna jump off with this, the extended mag for the XL and how comparable it is to the new macro and how it's essentially the same. So if you're used to this feel with the extended mag, you'll be essentially the same with this one. So we're gonna show that side by side so you can get a good look. In case you haven't seen one of these yet and had a chance to feel it, look at it so you can see what the difference actually looks like. As you can see, it's just about the same. The grip angle of the macro is more straight versus the angle of the XL frame. So the XL frame actually, with the extended mag, actually does hang down just a little lower than the macro. So the macro is actually a slightly smaller grip than the XL with the extended mag, which is good because really more capacity, smaller frame, that's good for concealment. Next up, we got the Hellcat Pro. It was essentially the second iteration of the Hellcat to give you a larger gun with more capacity at 15. Now, this gun, again, is gonna be very comparable to the macro. So if you already have one of these, you know, maybe you don't look at the macro, but I think the macro offers better things, right? You got the things we talked about in the original video, I think it's a better gun than the Hellcat Pro. I've not shot the Hellcat Pro, but I will say that the Hellcat Pro feels better in my hand than the original Hellcat did, and this is why I went with the XL over the Hellcat originally. Uh, however, I've, I've heard people that, that shot this gun, and they've said that they felt like it felt good in their hand, but then they didn't like the way it shot. So again, that's something you're gonna have to decide, me shooting it here today is gonna, you know, tell you whether or not you should buy it or not. We're just talking about sizes here. So let's look how it stacks up against the macro. As you can see, the macro and the Hellcat Pro are essentially the same size. We got essentially the same barrel length. The grip on the macro is slightly longer given that 17 round mag. So it does poke down just a hair, just a hair longer than the Hellcat Pro, but it has a lot of the same features. Uh, I think the macro still beats it out in the way the extended beaver tail is and how, how low it sits in your hand compared to the Hellcat Pro, but it is gonna give you that optics ready and all of those things you might like. Uh, however, again, I just think that the macro is a better buy. Even though it is a little more expensive, you're getting more bang for your buck. All right, next up is the 320 X Compact Carry. Uh, this is essentially, again, the same size gun as the macro. You can see here, lining these up together, the gun is essentially the same. The same in dimensions as far as barrel. The grip is, with the 17 round mag, is almost identical to the 320. It's thinner than the 320, so you're getting a little bit of a thinner grip. You're getting a higher, a higher beaver tail, which means a lower bore axis, so it's gonna sit lower in your hand, and that's why I'm not a fan of the 320 line myself, is I just don't like how high it sits in the hand. Um, I've shot a couple of these, not often, but I just feel like it's a brick. It's almost like a revolver in your hand. It sits so high. So I think there's something to be said about the high bore axis of the 320 compared to another similar size gun in the macro, which is now getting out of that micro compact or you know, very small compact gun breaching into that almost mid-size category. And also you're getting only 15 rounds in the 320 versus the 17 out of the X macro. So again, this macro is really just beating everything in capacity and overall size and function. Next up is everybody's favorite, the Springfield XD Elite Compact. This one is in nine mil. This is only gonna have 13 rounds unless you get the mag extensions or the extended mags. So you're losing capacity in the Springfield, but you are getting the optics ready. Uh, you're not getting as low of a bore axis as you are with the macro, as you can see here side by side. It's a little shorter than the Springfield. The grip length is a little longer, but not by much. It's almost the same. However, you're getting, you know, four more rounds. 
So great. You're getting, um, I think, just better ergos overall. I will say, I'm not always a fan of the way the, the SIG 365 line triggers break. I know they break at 90. It's a whole different feel. It's something you got to get used to. However, if, if you follow me for a while and you've seen my videos in the past and you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm currently carrying the Springfield XDM Elite Compact in 10 mil. And to be honest with you, I really like the trigger on the Springfield. I, I think it feels really nice. Um, I have no complaints with it overall. I'm carrying it because I want to carry a 10 mil and the 10 mil in this form factor, nobody else is doing a 10 mil in this size with these features. So I think for me, if SIG or somebody releases a 10 mil in this form factor, like the macro, so if they came out with a macro in 10 mil, I'm all over that because I like the features and the overall size, form and function of the macro 10 mil it's a no-brainer. But just to quickly to summarize on the compact versus the macro, it is a bigger gun overall, just in height. The grip is wider. Uh, again, I think it beats it out. I think the macro beats it out. All right, next up, not to be forgotten, the HK VP9SK or P30, depending on which way you want to go, hammer or striker. But the VP9SK was always gonna be my carry gun. I love the VP9, I love the ergos of the VP9, I love being able to switch out, you know, the back straps and the side panels, and then when they came out with the optics ready version, I was like, great, this is it. Because it, overall, it's just a smaller gun, bigger than my XL that I was currently carrying. However, I just liked, I liked the way it felt, and I liked what I could do with the VP9 in the aftermarket, even though SIG there is a lot of parts for those in the aftermarket. But stacking these up side by side, as you can see, obviously the VP9 SK is a thicker overall gun. And surprisingly, even though the VP9 SK is only holding 13 rounds in this configuration, the SIG in, with its 17 round mag is almost identically the same in height and grip length. So you're gaining four rounds in the macro in almost the same size grip, length, width it's smaller. So depending on if you like a, a wider or thinner grip, that's gonna be your decision. However, you know, they both come optics ready. The barrel on these are very, very close. The VP9 SK is actually, the form factor, as you can see over top, is a little longer in barrel, just in total overall length. It is going to be a thicker overall gun, as we, just, as we just talked about. I really think the VP9SK is a great carry option. However, and it hurts me to say it, the macro, 17 rounds and these features with the built-in comp and all that stuff, man, I mean, again, your decision, but I still, I'm still taking the macro. All right, next up is the FN509 Compact. This one has a 15 round mag. And again, I, I dig the features of this. It's optics ready, it comes with the tall backup sights if you wanna run the red dot and do the co-witnessing thing. But as you can see, stacking these up, it is an almost identical gun. The barrel lengths, I'm not gonna go into specifics on specific inches of barrels, but overall, these, all these barrels we're showing here today are very, very close, if not the same, we're talking about form factor and what might be a good option for you. And again, the macro is a thinner gun. The height is almost identical as the grips look to be very, very close. It's a more straight angle of the macro versus a little bit more of a canted angle of the, the FN509. I just think, again, the features that this is coming with, and I know the macro is gonna be at a slightly higher price point out of the box than most of these. Not all of them, but most of them. But I feel like for what you're getting and in the capacity you're getting out of the macro, it is just category leading in compacts and even a lot of mid-size guns with the capacity and stuff that you get right out of the box. All right, all you CZ fanboys out there, the CZ P10C, how does it stack up with the macro? Let's take a look. 
Now, obviously the P10C is a much longer barrel. You can see that here. The grip is much chunkier, so it's a thicker grip. The grip length, now even though the CZ P10C is only holding 15 rounds versus the macro 17 rounds, the macro is still the same length overall as the P10C. Also a thinner gun. Uh, the macro is just coming in at a size that is literally, in my mind, beating everything, every comparable gun in its category and flexing out of its category. I just, I don't see how this couldn't be your next carry gun. If you're looking for a new carry gun, if you want something that's a little smaller than these options you've seen so far, you want more capacity and you want even if you don't want the comped slide. But I mean, if it comes with the gun, why not? Uh, you know, why not? I mean, you're gonna spend a bunch of money converting your XL, buying the frame and the mags. You know, it's almost like just trade in your XL and get a macro. I mean, uh, you know, why not? But you can see here that the, C, the PT-10C is a much larger gun, just overall and barrel length and every other dimension it seems to be uh, larger except for the overall height with the grip. Again, I think the macro's got it. The Smith & Wesson 2.0 9mm compact. Now when this gun came out, uh, you know, some time ago, I really liked this gun. Uh, I had not shot it at the time, but I love what they did upgrading this pistol. I feel like the trigger was better. Uh, definitely the grip, all of the, how rugged and how crisp, how sticky, you know, how much friction we'll say, as Lucas said in his video, is with this, it is, it is better. And I'm not just spouting off what he said, I mean, it, it is true what he said, those things are true about this pistol. So this is going to be a, a very good comparison, I feel like, even though this is holding 15 rounds, just like all of most of these other options here have the ability to, if not come standard with 15, uh, this would be a really nice option coming with the sights, optics ready, the grippier uh, grip and all of those things. Well, let's see how it stacks up. You can see here, you're looking at one, the grip length of the macro is just a touch, just a touch longer, but you're getting two more rounds. It's a thinner grip. It's a thinner overall gun. The slide is thinner than the Smith & Wesson. Um, I've not fired this one, so I'm not gonna comment on the trigger. I'm just, oh, sometimes I'm not a fan of that, that 90 degree breaking of the trigger of the SIGs, but I've gotten used to it with the XL. Um, however, shooting my 10 mil that I'm carrying now, I really, I, I like that XD trigger. It's, it, it's a nice trigger. I mean, everybody's gonna, everybody hates on the XDs, but man, it. It, it's been a solid gun for me so far, and I trust it. So there's that anyway. But back to the Smith & Wesson, the features you're getting, this, is, this would be really close. I like the ported slide in the macro, and I like the 17 rounds. Uh, however, I like, I like the way the Smith & Wesson feels in my hand. It's not too big, like I have a medium-sized hand, um, but it's just, it's not too large. Uh, but you know, to me, this macro grip being a little thinner and being able to change out the back straps on the macro like you can on the Smith & Wesson, I think gives it that versatility. I think it's a very close, very close in my mind. They're competing very closely here, uh, but I still think just because of that extra two rounds and the ported slide, I gotta give it to the macro, but it'll be very close. I wouldn't mind carrying either, I'm gonna be honest with you. The PDP by Walther. 15 round capacity out of the wall. For now you're gonna say, Steve, this is a mid-sized gun. Steve, this is a duty gun. It's not supposed to be small. Just like you say when I compared this gun to the VP9SK, the VP9SK is a small compact gun. This is a duty gun. It's gonna be bigger, blah, blah, blah. However, this gun is still in that same category of what people carry concealed. It's that mid-size, the compact to mid-size gun that you're going to carry inside the waistband and outside. So people carry this appendix. It's, it's small enough to do that. So we're going to compare. Let's take a look. 
Here we go. The macro obviously is thinner in grip. It's thinner in slide. We talked about this in my original PDP video. The PDP is a chunky boy. And for 15 rounds in the PDP, I'm getting two more in the macro at a smaller gun. I, I think, again, it depends on what you're looking to do. I mean, the barrel is going to be longer in the PDP than the macro. But if you want a thicker gun, you want a big boy, then the PDP is a good option. It's, you're going to have a little bit more to hold on to. Uh, however, I think that being that the macro is breaching into that midsize category, especially, I mean, obviously in capacity, because these midsize guns aren't even having 17 from the factory. It is still beating it out in what it can do and the features that it has. I love the PDP. I think the PDP shoots really nice. But you can see here that it is just a larger gun. And again, it's your choice. I'm just here to show you the differences and what it looks like and what it might feel like to you if you want to carry it. Last but not least, the Glock is here. The Glock 19, 15 rounds, less than the macro. The same size as the macro. As you can see, the grip is essentially the same. It is a thinner gun. It is a shorter barrel than the Glock. It is overall smaller than the Glock. Sits lower in the hand. Now, you know I'm not a Glock fan. Don't own a Glock. I've shot them. Eh, whatever. It's, it's what it is. However, this gun for the money, coming optics ready, coming with the ported barrel, excuse me, coming, coming with the, the ported slide, you're getting more features. It's a smaller gun. The grip is almost, the grip is essentially identical in length and you get 17 rounds versus 15 from the factory. This macro just beats everything here today in my mind. Overall, of what we've seen here, more capacity, smaller, whether in barrel or thickness or overall height in the grip length, the macro is just beating guns, in my mind, in other categories, in what it's capable of doing. So again, many people carry the Glock 19, and it's everybody's favorite. But this, I feel like, is just giving you more option, more capacity, more overall capability with the optics cuts coming factory and you have to try to find an MOS and they're hard to find and it's just a pain. You got you know, the optics plates and all, everything that goes along with the Glock, SIG has just made it easier. So I just really think, even though I'm not a Glock fan, I would tell you if I thought that this was better than this, and I really just don't think that it is, just out of the box features. You might think, oh, it might shoot better or whatever it is, you're used to Glocks. But you can see here in the side-by-side, -side, if you're looking at something that's in this category, that has the capacity, that has the size you might like, the macro is checking all the boxes. For me, you make the decision, you decide what you wanna carry. Hopefully this video helped you out there and make a next purchase, if you will, but that's it guys. Don't forget Steve MP5 in the Instagrams. I'll see you next time.